Uh, we're in um, some fairly interesting and fairly depressing economic times at the moment. Um, I have mentioned this before, I think. Um, if you look back probably nine months and even six months ago, um, you know, this notion of a credit crunch nine months ago, no one really you know, heard the, the phrase. Mm. And then, you know, what was going on in the, the American housing market suddenly had this sort of domino effect across the world. And we're now, you know, we are into, into recession uh, or depression, whichever you want to call it. Um, and it is having and has had a, a fairly major impact um, on particularly residential, but I think what we're seeing now is commercial development, um, not just in East Manchester, Manchester, but, you know, across the country, across the world. Um, so, you know, if you look around and you, you see some of the sites is that there is building still carrying on, but it's very, very slow compared to what it was before. And I think it's only happening where there is public funding going into it. I think the private sector has taken a, taken a view is that with a, a, you know, little access to, to credit and, and mortgages available, um, the housing market actually, you know, almost at a standstill. Uh, very, very few sales, um, people not being able to, to get access to, to, to move on to the housing ladder. Um, there, there is a big, big issue with regards to it, it, its impact on the area. Um, with all these things, it's cyclical. Um, you know, I've, I've also got a view in terms of part of it's not, not a bad thing. Um, we, if you look back in 99, 98, 99, 2000, at that time the housing market was fairly dead in, in East Manchester, but in a different way dead is that values were incredibly low. You could buy a house in East Manchester for a couple of thousand pounds. Um, no demand for most of the houses here. People just didn't want to live here. Uh, one in five properties were empty. Uh, very poor conditions in terms of housing. Now, if, if you then roll forward in terms of last year, we had you know, seen major changes. Is that you know it's a more desirable place to live. High demand properties. A lot of the old council stock that we transferred to Eastlands Homes and Northwoods Housing in, in, in Newton Heath had been improved and was much better quality. A lot of new housing had been built, housing market had, had gone from strength to strength. But one of the byproducts of that is that values had gone through the roof and suddenly housing was becoming unaffordable for, for many people, particularly East Manchester people. Um, housing values have now started to, to reverse and I think you know if it makes it affordable for local people. I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily, you know, with all these things there are going to be people who suffer from it and people who probably make money out of it, but uh, you know, I think uh, the, the balancing of the, of the market was, was probably overdue. Um, the big issue is how long this is going to last and, and the impact it's going to have on places like East Manchester. Uh, we do expect um, that for the next probably foreseeable future being two years at least is that you know, the residential market is going to take some time to pick up and the commercial market probably similarly. However, um, there are still going to be some developments and some fairly major developments that will happen over the next 12 months in East Manchester or will be brought forward. I think when we look back in, in the history of East Manchester regeneration, I, I think you know, we, we often talk about you know, the Commonwealth Games being such an important thing, but probably more important potentially is the day that the Man City Football Club was taken over by the Abu Dhabi United Group, um, the, the Middle Eastern developers. Um, they are seriously rich people, they are incredibly rich people and they're not just interested in running a football club, they're, they're interested in terms of getting involved in terms of, of, of wider than that. Um, they are looking in terms of what they could develop in terms of East Manchester in particular, they are very interested in terms of what's going on in East Manchester and Manchester as a whole. Um, we, we passionately believe that the reason why they chose Man City because of, of the potential of the city as a whole and they were quite excited about getting involved in terms of, of this city. So that we do think that sometime in the next couple of months there will be some big announcements about how the owners of the football club will want to get involved in terms of, of development in East Manchester and bring forward some big, big developments. Part of that, um, link to that, is, is in terms of the post-casino site and the, what happened with the casino in terms of, you know, we know the government firstly awarded Manchester the, the regional casino and then took it off us by... Uh, well, for whatever reasons, we'll, we'll, we'll go into that here. I think we've talked about that previously. But that site is still a developable site, and there is a competition at the moment in terms of looking to bring a visitor attraction of international significance. You know, I can't tell you exactly what that means, because I, I don't know at this moment in time. But I do know that there is interest in terms of bringing something, a leisure facility or facilities to the area that will you know be a big, big visitor attraction that will add to what we've got already. Um, and we're going through that, that 
process at the moment in terms of a competitive process and again we would hope that maybe January, February time there'll be some announcements about where that's up to, who we're going to be working with and what we might expect to be developed alongside the stadium. So those two things are massive, massive big developments, you know, and massive developments at any time, but massive developments when the level of development is going to be, you know, reducing significantly. That will keep things ticking along in East Manchester, that will keep construction jobs available, that will ensure that, you know, we remain a focus for, for the wider area. There are there will still be other things, you know, we are still working with a developer called Dransfield to, to redevelop Openshaw District Centre to bring Morrisons as the anchor supermarket there and then other shops on the back of it. We hope that might start sometime in, in the middle of next year. And um, we are working with the Greater Manchester Police about moving their headquarters to Central Park in Newton Heath. Um, and that's quite well advanced and again we would expect hopefully decisions to be made in the spring with regards to that. Um, there are other developments that no doubt we would hope that might get brought forward but I just think you know, hopefully that will give you a sense that whilst there's bad bad news out there in terms of the credit crunch and the economic conditions having a, a serious impact on, on a lot of activity not just in East Manchester but elsewhere there are some big developments that you, you know, will hear more about in, in the next couple of months.